Botox is celebrating its 25th year anniversary. Botox has been used for many medical disorders. We started using Botox Cosmetic in 2002 as it was initially approved for the frown line area. Botox Cosmetic is used primarily in the upper third of the face. It's used for the treatment of frown lines, forehead creases, and crow's feet. Botox Cosmetic treats what we call dynamic or active wrinkles. These are wrinkles that we see when we use our muscles. So the mus muscles of facial expression. When I'm frowning, I have these lines. When I'm raising my brows, I have the horizontal lines. And when I'm smiling, I have what we call crow's feet. What Botox is doing is it's selectively paralyzing part of the muscle where we're using it. It blocks a messenger molecule we call acetylcholine between the nerve and the muscle, and therefore it inhibits the muscle movement to our benefit. Botox is used all over the body for different spasticity issues, bladder spasm and back spasm. It can be used in children with strabismus or cross-eyedness, spasticity and Parkinson's disease, and a lot of other, a lot of other spastic uh, conditions. In this instance, uh, for the glabella, for example, we're using typically two injections on either side of this muscle, and you can see here where this contracts, we would place two injections just on this side here. Typically, it takes Botox about three to five days to begin working, and we usually don't see the maximum result for about 10 days or so. The first time Botox Cosmetic is used, it typically lasts about three and a half to four months. As patients use Botox more frequently, that is, it's four months from now and my Botox is beginning to wear off, if I'm treated before it's completely gone, it'll probably last somewhere between four to six months. One of the most common questions that we get is, what is Botox Cosmetic? I've heard it was a poison. And the truth is, Botox Cosmetic is derived from a bacterium we call Clostridium botulinum. If we are infected with this bacterium, we will develop botulism. But this is a purified protein. Botox Cosmetic is botulism toxin type A. And it's a safe molecule. It's used for probably 30 different medical disorders, including migraine and tension headaches, excessive sweating, and many other conditions. Botox Cosmetic has been used hundreds of millions of times over the years and is very safe to use. Some patients are concerned these days with looking unnatural and worrying about their face looking frozen. Back before Botox Cosmetic was officially approved or early on after its approval, patients wanted to be treated so they couldn't move anything. They were completely frozen. People didn't know about Botox Cosmetic back then, and so those individuals were sort of taking advantage of the fact that they looked um, very youthful and they didn't have a lot of lines. These days, if you turn on the local newscast, you'll see, unfortunately, some people who've been treated unnaturally with Botox. They look paralyzed, they look frozen. The goal with Botox Cosmetic is to diminish the lines, but give the patient the overall appearance that they expect. Most people these days want to look natural, diminishing lines. They want still to be able to express themselves. And with the proper injection of Botox Cosmetic, you absolutely will look natural and have a wonderful treatment. The goal with Botox Cosmetic is to diminish the dynamic or active wrinkles, allowing patients to still look natural. We warn patients that this is the beginning of a new addiction. It's not a bad addiction, but once you've been treated with Botox Cosmetic, there's a very good chance that you will continue to be treated. We have a great deal of experience using Botox Cosmetic. Uh, in the past, we've been a national trainer for Allergan, the company that manufactures Botox. And we are typically one of the highest volume practices for Botox Cosmetic in the entire Midwest. I believe one of the reasons why we have such a great deal of experience is that patients continue to come back because we provide a natural outcome, we explain what we're doing, we walk patients through the process, and we use a technique where, frankly, it's a little tiny injection. We really try to minimize any risks, the main risk being bruising, and, uh, and I think that we do a very fine job giving patients what they expect. The biggest risk with Botox Cosmetic is the potential for a bruise. 
Bruising does occur. Generally, it's very minimal. And for most women, they can cover it with a little bit of makeup if it does occur. We try very hard to avoid any of the little blood vessels. So when we're treating you, you're under some very direct lights so we can minimize that risk. When we're treating forehead lines or wrinkles with Botox Cosmetic, other complications can include drooping of the eyebrow. When we treat the forehead area, we want to treat in a gentle U shape. The idea is to try to elevate the brow so that we look more refreshed. Many times uh, that's successful in the desirable outcome that patients are seeking with Botox Cosmetic. If an injector comes too far lateral or too low, we can create heaviness of the eyebrow. While that's a temporary problem, it is something that's undesirable. Another complication that can occur with the use of Botox Cosmetic is drooping of the eyelid itself. This too is a temporary problem. There are eye drops to counter this problem, but if this occurs, and it occurs probably once a year, then uh, it typically lasts for about three weeks or so. Rarely, other complications such as headaches can occur after the first injection with Botox. This is very unusual, but this did occur with me when I was first treated with Botox over a decade ago. I believe what's happening is as some of the muscle is becoming inactivated, the muscle in the surrounding area that isn't yet affected by the Botox is overcompensated, overcompensating and working harder, and I think that's where the headache develops. This is transient, it goes away, but it can occur occasionally.